Hey guys, before we get rolling here, I just want to thank those of you who have left me a review on iTunes. This helps me keep the podcast free, so please keep them coming. Tell your friends. I also want to thank those guys that have been sending in the questions. Um, This is what this podcast is about. It's about getting you the info that uh, you need to help become a better hunter. Uh, Now you can actually go to my website, interviewswiththehuntingmasters.com, and click on the Ask the Pro section. And you can send me your questions there. And you can even suggest a guest. And lastly, before we jump into this episode, I want to shed a little light on one of my sponsors, Sneak Tech Sneak Boots. Uh, I've been wearing them now for several years, and they've really upped my stalking game. I'm I'm not a very sneaky person. Um, And I find that that extra added... um, stealthiness that they give me has really really improved my stock i believe in them so much that i've decided to give away one pair each month to a lucky subscriber so if you're a subscriber once a month i'm going to be announcing a winner to win a pair of sneak tech boots so go ahead and go check them out at sneaktech.com and it's s-n-e-e-k-t-e-c.com Let's get to the next episode. Hi, welcome to the interviews with Hunting Masters brought to you by theoutdoorinsiders.com, your number one spot for inside information and sit good gear. So today we uh, we have with us on, uh, on the phone Elk Nut, Paul uh, Medell, and uh, we're going to talk about um, elk vocalizations, what they're talking about, how to decipher which calls to use and when to use them. Um, it's going to be a good show. How you doing, Paul? Hey, I'm doing good, John. Thanks uh, thanks a bunch for asking me to be a part of the show. I, I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. So I don't know if, how much you've listened to my show or not, but my show is comprised of basically I have an Ask the Pros section on my website, and people go in and they ask questions, and I compile these questions, and once I have a – enough questions in a certain niche, I go and find a guy that I think is best suited to answer those questions. So I have you on today to do that. Um, we had a bunch of questions come across right here, uh, you know, right in the heart of elk season. Some some early seasons have already started, but some of them are just about to kick off, like Arizona starts tomorrow um, and uh, Utah on Saturday. So um, by the way, I'm going Saturday for an elk hunt, so I'm uh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'll learn a couple more things before I hit the woods here. <laughs> um, why don't you give us a little rundown about yourself and tell everybody about uh, Elk Nut and yourself um, real quick before we jump into these questions? Well, like you say, my name is Paul Medell, and uh, I am the owner of uh, Elk Nut Outdoors. And probably for what, 19 years now we've had it. And uh, we actually are, we sell and have uh, carry CDs and DVDs. I wrote the Elk Nuts playbook. And uh, we have a, you know, a line of the calls that we use that we think work great. But the the information all came about many, many years ago because folks were seeing here in the state of Idaho where we live, how successful we were being. Uh, You know, every year we would be bringing bulls down. (laughs) And so I started to share with them uh, the elk vocalization that I had been doing a lot of study and research, which has now been, heck, over 30 years, 34 years that I've uh, been doing this just because I had a passion for it, knowing that there was something to those sounds that both cows and bulls make. And so it kind of stemmed from there and evolved into uh, putting it into information that individuals could uh, listen to and watch in, in the convenience of their own home. Awesome. So you've just come out with a an app, and later on here in the podcast, we'll kind of get into how how to use it and when to use it. But explain to us a little bit about this app that you got that just you just rolled out. Yeah, this is something that's taken man seven eight months uh, to comprise, and the app is is you know if I don't say so myself, it's just absolutely fantastic. It really is. If you want to learn elk vocalization, if, and, and in other words, what, you, what you're going to do is, do you want to be able to break down the messages that cows and bulls both make? They make a lot of different sounds. 
And the difference between the two is cows will change their cadence to their tone to send a specific message to the herd, to a single uh, elk, to a bull, whereas bulls use an intensity difference. So when bulls are using a bugle, if we heard six different bulls make a different bugle, most of us say, oh, there's a bull bugling over there. And that's mm -hmm. about you know our understanding to it. But they actually are sending a message, whether a bull is trying to locate and find other elk, whether he's warning another bull or two to stay back, whether his cows got separated and he's trying to regather them, just like a gobbler would regather his hens, things of that nature. So all these bugles that a bull will make, these elk out there in the wild, they know exactly what's being said. So if we in turn can understand what each one of these sounds sound like and what the message mm -hmm. is that's being sent, we don't need to see these elk making sounds. We only need to hear them. And we can right. go, oh, okay, here's, here's what's going on over here. And now we form a game plan. Awesome. Well, that kind of leads me into my first first question, which is, what do you think are the like four most important elk sounds that a, a guy should master, should understand when he's hearing them, and and be able to react to those? Yeah, you know, and there's there's more to it than just say, okay, here's the four sounds. You know, seriously, because when a person says, okay, everybody will tell you out there, you should know how to make a location bugle. And I agree. You should be able to know how to make a location bugle, a challenge bugle, a lip ball, and a nervous grunt. And, and guess what? Those are all bull sounds. And a lot of right. people are like, oh, man, if you bugle or I hunt, you're going to run everything off. We kind of rely on cow calls. But if you ask those same people making those comments, okay, what does those four different sounds sound like? Which one would you – can you recognize any of them? And, you, and most of them cannot. They don't know the difference between a challenge bugle and a location bugle. Or if they hear a lip ball, they say, oh, that's the strangest sound I ever heard. That's a sound that mm -hmm. most elk would never make. Uh, there's something not right. You don't have to be a good bugler because look how, how terrible he sounds. But right. they don't understand what they're hearing. They just need to understand that. It's just like a golfer. You just don't whip any club out of the bag to make a specific shot. You just don't do that. If you do, you're, you're going to pretty much be a terrible golfer because right. you're just grabbing right. anything to accomplish a shot. When you're calling, you need to know what the definition is and when do you bulls use lip balls? When do they use a challenge bugle or an ad or t advertising bugle or a location bugle or nervous grunts? What are why do they use them? And once you understand that, you're going to be a lot better hunter because you're going to, it's going to help you to appreciate what's going on out there. And you're going to start using sounds that elk expect to hear at that time, not just throwing out a sound or two because that's all, you know, and right. so this is very right. important, especially on over the counter hunts where elk get heavily educated. And that's where I really try to, to share information with people is those are the toughest areas to hunt are those over the counter hunts. So those four sounds, are very important. It doesn't mean we shouldn't know any cow sounds. We should. But as far as the four sounds right there, I, I, I'm more on the bull sounds because we've called over a thousand bulls to bow range. And I can tell you 95% of them are through bull sounds on over the counter hunts, not cow sounds. We do use them, but it's like 10% cow, 90% bull. And once you understand when to use each specific sound, you will start doing it too because it, because of the results. They're incredible. Right. And, 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 you know, this is this is very important uh, to, uh, to be able to have good results with your sounds. So before we move forward and keep talking about this, can you go ahead and make those bull bugles, those four different bugles for us and explain which ones they are? And then we could kind of start picking them apart and, and telling the listeners what what they all mean and why and when you would use them. Okay. And the very first one would be a location bugle. Everybody's heard of a location bugle, but in reality, most people don't know when they're hearing one. And so here's how you know, if you're hearing a location bugle in the woods, one is the sound of it. Number two is <laughs> its use. In other words, when a bull is trying to find a group of elk, other elk, because he doesn't know where they're at, he is in search of, 
He is moving the same as if we were hunting and we lost our hunting partner and we can't find him and we're calling out. If we don't hear him, we keep moving and hollering his name and keep moving until we get a satisfactory visual or response or something. And this is kind of what elk are doing as bulls move through the woods, especially September, October, they have a purpose. And the purpose that a bull uses a location bugle is to find other elk. Why does he want to find them? Because he's looking for the hot cows. Just like a big buck would look for hot does in November, bulls are looking for the groups that have hot cows. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they move through the woods. So when you hear a bugle being made, and it's like a ridge runner is what I call them, and they're moving, they bugle here. A minute and a half later, they're bugling here and here and here, and they're putting distance. They're in search of. They're looking for other elk. They're not challenging anything. They're not advertising themselves. They're looking for where is the group. And once they get a response, their ulterior motive is to go close enough to that group, circle them, and do what? They're scent checking it. They're right. trying to see if there's a hot cow in the group. They could care less about a non-hot cow or shaking hands with a bull. He's looking for cows that are coming into estrus or into heat. And so when he's doing that, this is the bugle tone that you will hear right here. And that's a real standard bugle sound in the woods. You notice I didn't grunt. I didn't chuckle. Mm -hmm. I didn't make a bunch of creative ruckus that probably couldn't hear a half a mile plus anyway, you know, just to hear myself bugle. But that's a standard bugle that I will use. And so do bulls when they're in search of other elk and what we look for. And I can tell you what the satellites are looking for here. They're looking for a warning or a detrimental response. And the reason being is when a bull shows defensive action, he has a hot cow. And a hot cow or one in estrus, that's the same meaning, just so the listeners realize that. When I refer to hot or a cow in estrus, it, it's one in the same. But the point is, is that when I receive a, a challenge bugle back, whether it's one or two grunts and a coarse screaming bugle and or one or two grunts at the end, I know darn well he's being defensive. When a bull has six cows, five cows, three cows, 15 cows, and there's nothing coming in to estrus, nothing, he's not defensive. He could care less. He'll even let other bulls walk right amongst them, and you'll see two or three bulls amongst his cows because he knows nothing can be bred. But the minute they start showing signs of coming in into that heat or estrus, that is when he starts pushing them back. See, because these cows will show signs anywhere from one to one and a half days before they are mm -hmm. ready to be bred. Through scent, they're dripping, leaking like a female dog, and they'll emit that scent. And when she's ready to be bred, she has 12 to 15 hours to be bred. And so this is what's going on right here. When you've got defensive action, that's what that satellite's looking for. That's what I'm looking for as a hunter. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for the same bugle back. Because it just shows it's probably another satellite. Sometimes you'll have three or four in the bachelor groups. And, but this is what's going on with that location bugle. Now, if you're going to get more of a, 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 a into a challenge, because like you say, you wanted to know what the difference was. So right. we, on, a, on, a, on a location bugle, the bull is moving. On a challenge bugle, it's more noted that the bull is holding his position and warning because he's got cows there. So he's holding his position to an extent, and he's warning this bull or bulls, ever how many there are, to stay back or else. And so you would hear more of a challenge would be more – you can even have a challenge bugle without a grunt or, or two. I'll do it both ways. I'm going to do a grunt or two on the beginning. Okay. And that's what you'll hear a bull do. Kind of blow your earphones off a little bit. See, you notice the coarseness of that bugle. Okay. You notice the first one was sounded non intimidation, a nice, high, pure note, really nothing to it. You see, in search of, but when you hear that bull give that coarse scream right there, he's warning you to stay back. I mean, you can tell by the sound of his voice that, whoa. This guy's serious. And so you can tell right. right then and there he's being protective. He's defensive. So that is your, your challenge bugle. Now, if you have a bull, say I'm using a location bugle, and I get a bull to make this sound right here. Okay. That's a bull giving a lip ball bugle. Now, when you hear that lip ball bugle, and it's because – of your location bugle, he's rounding his cows up very, very quickly. 
So when you hear that, you don't need to see anything. Maybe it's 300 yards away and you've been given a location bugle and all of a sudden you hear that. Uh, a lip ball has a twofold message. It's warning the bull he just heard to stay back. And at the same time, it's letting the cows know that, who, that he has at present to gather together for possible departure. And that's exactly what he does. If this bull continues to come forward and puts pressure on him, he will have his, cow, his cows close enough to get the heck out of Dodge. And, they, and so the next time you may hear him bugle and you're continuing to bugle as a hunter, the distance is getting greater and greater and greater. And you're like, ah. And so you pushed him. So as a hunter, and I hear that sound, when I give my location bugle, what am I going to do? I'm running at that bull fast right. because I know I want to get over there and I want to call his cows from him to redirect them before they can gather together to him and try to redirect them to me. So I got to get as close as I can to do this. And in doing so, he will pose himself as the defense mechanism to get between you and his cows. And just in case some try to come over towards you. And when he does that, there's your shot opportunity, especially for an archery hunter, is that this really ticks them off. And you'll notice that when a bull has, you know, I would say six, seven, eight cows or less, you'll only usually hear one uh, uh, lip ball, sometimes two if they're spread way out. But if he has a large group of cows, you're going to notice him give that lip ball two or three times inside of a minute. His urgency, his demand, you get, gather together now because he has so many. So a lot of times I'm listening to what he says as I'm cutting the distance as fast as I can, uh, I can and not worrying about making noise. I'm going at him. And I'm what, cause what I'm going to do is try to call his cows from that's right. my very next thing. And I can do it with a lip ball or I can do it with an, a, another type bugle, which is called a roundup bugle. And you can pull cows that way. The roundup is not as demanding, but it can still be very, very effective. So anyway, so now you went from, from the location to the challenge, to the lip ball and the nervous grunt is, is, is probably one of the most powerful sounds you will ever use. And one of the most effective when used at the right time, we have probably put 40 bulls on the ground that that was the last sound they ever heard because <laughs> it's one that asks an action out of elk. Okay. You see, a lot of people are trying to stop elk with a cow count, cow sound, and, you know, they'll come through or maybe they're 10 yards and maybe they're 50 yards and, and, and they're drawn and they're trying to stop him as, as he comes through the lodge pole or through some kind of dark timber. And you need to stop him in a window in many of these cases. And you hear, pe hear people a lot of times they'll do this. And it just doesn't reach. If, if an elk is walking, moving, moving, he really can disguise sound. And, and, and so many times you'll watch a bull or a cow, whatever you're hunting, you know, it, it, it's up to an individual what animal he's hunting. But as he does, you'll notice many times on that sound, they hardly ever anchor right there. And that's what you need in that tight cover. You need to stop them on a dime. But many times on a cow sound, they'll make two or three or four more moves, more steps before they, maybe they're looking at you, but that doesn't stop them. Why? Because it doesn't ask them anything. It says there's an elk there. It right. doesn't have any action. The nervous grunt, ask for a visual identification it asks what where are you who are you what are you that is a huge factor right there let me, let me ask you this if you were i can understand that if one was coming in looking for a bull but if he was already coming into cow calls would you prefer to use a cow sound to stop him because that's what he's expecting no. to see and, and I've actually mentioned that many times in the DVDs and the app and well, as well, because it's an excellent question. And yes, last year I called a six point into my son on September the 3rd. I called him in with cow sounds. And right when he came into 20 yards, I saw my son draw and I was only 10 yards from him. And as he came through, I could have stopped him with a nervous grunt. But I saw the window of opportunity was around seven or eight feet long when they all came through with his vitals. And I knew there was a pretty good spot there. And at only 20 yards and it was pretty silent. I did that very thing, John. I just, you know, I mewed and right. he stopped. Right. And my son took him right there and the bull went maybe 40, 45 yards and piled nice. right up in front of us. Nice. So yes, there are times, but the nervous grunt is one that for sure can be used at any time. And so even though I might, I use a cow sound one time, it doesn't mean I, I, I would not use the nervous grunt. It's not like the nervous grunt, grunt is only reserved for if you brought him in with bull sounds. Cause a lot of times you're going to bring a bull in with both cow and bull sounds in, but the nervous grunt is just so, so, powerful and and you should be able to do it with your voice you should be able to do it with a reed or you should be able to do it with your bugle because you never know as a shooter 
or a lone hunter, which, how are you going to get caught? So the nervous grunt sounds like this with the bugle. <laughs> One note. That's it. And that's exact. How many times have we ever heard that in the woods? The bull's coming in or, or a cow. They all make that sound. They get mm -hmm. to a certain spot. They know they should see some, and that's all they do. And you're like, ah, oh, crud. You know, he's right there or she's right there and maybe only 40, 50 yards. And they know they should see the, from where, you know, something from where the source of the calling came from. And that the sound you will hear. And they're asking for an identification or a satisfying response because they know something should be there and they don't see it. And, and, and that's what that sound represents. So a lot of times that's why it's so important to know it because you want to stop them too when the opportunity arises uh, with that note. And if you're going to do it with a reed. That's all you have to do. If you're going to do it with your voice, you have to suck in. You cannot blow out. You're going to mm -hmm. go, that's what you're going to do. You're going to give it to, and you're just going to give anything that sounds like that sound. It does not have to be perfect because elk of different ages, one and a half to ten and a half make it. Cows make it. Calves make it. So you're, they don't care how much you sound like an immature or mature. It doesn't matter. It's the right sound at the right time. And that's what anchors them. And I bet you I've stopped an, uh, probably close to 20 bulls that were killed where I was the caller. And, and I've used my voice many, many times. Okay. And so it, it, it can work in, you know, either way. So those are four major powerful sounds. Once you can you make those and understand what you're saying when you use them as well as when the elk use them. Awesome. I'm just checking out some questions that came across here. Okay. Right. They they disappear as almost as fast as they pop up, so it's kind of hard to stay on top of it. Um, well, so let's let's just continue on what we're talking about because I mean, obviously, there's a lot of information. We could probably spend a whole podcast on one call or one you know one scenario, but let's try to pick up like maybe two different scenarios that are very easy for a, a guy to recognize. So like we already talked, you already talked a little bit about if you heard um, while you're doing a location bugle, if he, if he does a, a lip ball or a roundup call, what to do. What, what would we do if we heard one locating out there and we were just going to try to put a move on one that's locating bugle? Well, you're probably not going to put a move on a locating bugle bull, first of all, because he's on the move. Okay. And you can't keep up. You can't keep up with him. So what you're trying to do in most cases is you're trying to give him what he's looking for. Okay. So this bull is looking for a bull that has cow, hot cows, right? Mm -hmm. Just like a big buck is looking for does that are hot does. You've seen a big old buck walk into six, seven does, and you're watching him a half a mile away through the glass. He comes in, smells him, and the next thing you know, he walks right out of your life because there was no hot dough there. This is what bulls do. This is, there's no difference. So normally when I hear a location bugle, I'm going to give a challenge bugle or a lip ball, something of that nature right back. Why? Because it's showing him I I'm being defensive. I have a hot cow over here. So see, most people would try to go back with the same bugle or something or, 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 or try to cow call, which doesn't tell him anything. Just because a cow makes a cow sound, it does not mean she's ready to be bred. It just means there's a cow over there. So what I'm going to do, how do you know when there's a hot cow? Seriously, when you know there's a hot cow out there, you have the bulls being bulls. defensive. Yeah. That's it. The cows make no special sound. And then make them note of that. The cows do not make any kind of a, wow, a, a sound or a buzz or a whine or excited. Nothing to tell a bull, I am ready to be bred. She makes nothing. Zero. No. She only emits a scent. And so it's the bull who tells you. So when you start getting bulls that are defensive out there, that is when you know he has a cow either in heat or she's approaching it because there's that time period of a day or so that takes place before she's actually ready to be bred. And so what's happening right there, let's say you get that happening. So you got our location bugle type bull. He's moving through. Okay. He's looking for cows. He's not trying to build a harem. <laughs> he's looking for cows that are hot. So you give him that challenge bugle or lip ball. There's a real good chance you set up right there that he's going to come sneaking in. He's not going to bugle his way into you. That's too convenient. You know, they just, I mean, I, I, it's a bonus when they do it. Awesome. Sweet. Take it every time. But most of the time he comes slipping in, slipping in, slipping in. So you got to really have your head on a swivel and keep your calling up. 
Don't just give them one lip ball. I like making a lot of other sounds in there. Once I know that bull's within earshot, I like doing pants and things that show that about a bull's showing excitement. You'll hear a bull kind of and he'll do that a lot of times around the cow as she starts coming into heat because anytime a bull pants, it denotes excitement or frustration. Mm -hmm. And he can direct this toward cows or bulls. It doesn't have to just be one. It's not reserved for one or the other. But the point is when I give that challenge, you see, or that warning to this passerby, and then he hears these other sounds, and he hears me my kind of moaning and groaning over there, and I'll give maybe a short little lip ball again. I'm trying to gather my calf. This sells it to him. This is worth investigation. And that's what you're doing. You're just trying to pull this guy over. And so that's one of the things that I would do. Now, if you had a bull who's advertising himself, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. you're in the woods. This is one of the most common things that you'll ever hear. You're walking through the woods. You haven't made a sound. And maybe you park down below or you're walking down a trail. You go up a mile or whatever, and all of a sudden you hear a bull bugle out of nowhere. This happens all the time. It's already happened to us several times this year. You'll hear him bugle out of nowhere without you, without him responding to you. And you're like, oh, we got a bull up here. He's probably four or 500, maybe higher. We got to climb up another 400 feet of elevation. He's up in that area. There's probably a bench there. And then you're making your way up and he bugles again. And he bugles a third time over a minute or two. Nothing answers him. That is not a bull using a location bugle. He's, no. he's holding position. He's advertising himself, trying to draw any cows with an earshot in that vicinity to his spot, his location. So now you're starting to say, okay, this is a bull using advertising bugles. What is he looking for? Looking for cows. cows. So you're much better off to get this bull by cow calling, not the bugle and threaten him nine times out of 10. The next time you hear him, he's a little further away, a little further away, a little further. The last thing he wanted was a confrontation. And so he starts pushing away from you. So give him what he's asking for. So what I do is you got to remember this is like you talking to somebody. When somebody throws out that bugle or, hey, are you over there, John? Do you wait about a minute or two before you answer him? No. no. You're like, oh, crap, that's Joe over there. Hey, I'm over here. So this is what I do is I wait for him to light that bugle back up. Throw out that, that, that advertising bugle because nothing's answering him. So I know he's bugling on his own. If it was multiple bulls bugling, totally different atmosphere, different right. encounter. Right. We have a single bull here, so now I'm going to let him know I heard him. Okay, when a cow is accepting and hears an invite from a bull, she makes a special sound. She doesn't walk around with a hoochie mama squeezing this thing, and she's not just going, meow, meow. That's it's, a very excited, it's a very excited call. Yes, she will. She'll, she, you'll usually hear her. We'll make the sound if it's okay. Go ahead, for sure. She'll do that right there, and she lets him know, and he'll usually bugle her, and sometimes he'll start chuckling her on the end. A chuckle is an invite to come on over your, his way. A lot of times, if all you're doing is cow calling and you get that bull to chuckle you, he's telling you to come on over there. He's letting you know where he is and to come over that way. If it's a satellite, you got to really watch it because he's usually going to meet you halfway. Herd bull, no. He stays tight. He's not going to leave the cows he has to come and hook up a cow. He will call her to them. So what I'm trying to do is I'm making these sounds and I'm listening is if any distance is, is, is being cut, when I hear him calling back, I immediately will start to set up where I think I've got a really good area because I know this bull's coming to me. But if it's a herd bull, he's going to make, you'll notice all his sounds come from one spot. Right. And so you got to go to him all the way to him in order to take that bull, which means you got to have the wind and you have to have the cover and you have to make sure you don't bump into a spike or a few cows. You know, you're, you're, you're evaluating everything out there as you're using a set of sounds. But your odds of taking that bull are extremely high, really good when he invites you like that. So those are just some of the things that we look for when we're out there. And, you know, just so the listeners know, in the last 27 years, well, we've killed four bulls this year already and in, 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 since the season started on August the 30th. Awesome. And, and so we have 189 bulls down in the last 27 years, all over-the-counter bulls except for maybe seven or eight. They were uh, public land bulls, but they were draws. Right. And so – 
but most all ours are over the counter and we kill a lot of five and six point bulls. Most of them are sixes. We usually let everything else have a pass. But other than that, you know, just so guys, and I'm not trying to brag to them or anything. I just want them to know that these calls that we use and when you understand them, even in heavily hunted areas, when you start selling yourself that you're an elk by making sounds that they expect to hear at that time or listening to them. There are very many times, John, that we hear sounds and we are allowed to slip in silently. If I can slip in silently, that's my first ulterior motive right there without mm -hmm. making anything and giving my position away is I'm going to slip in and try to take that bull. But so many times in these dark timber areas where there's downfall everywhere and brush and burns, oh, you can't even get a hundred yards from them without being so noisy that now you either have to call your way to them or mm -hmm. you have to now bring them over to you you right. see and so you have to evaluate that fine line and say okay which method do i need to use here in order to try to have a close encounter at this bull and so you know everything is is you're reading the situation reading it reading it and i could give you two really good examples on the two nice bulls i called in this year for my son uh, he had the wyoming tag and he has an, a tag here in idaho and he's already filled them both and you know, unless you want to ask another question, but I could, I could, I could kind of give you an idea of how it started. And I do and want to clarify something. For, I do want to. I sure, want to get sure. This for sure, I do want to clarify. So, let's continue to go with that uh, scenario that you had just talked about. Um, so, we're, we just give that excited cow call, and we're we're heading towards him. Mm -hmm. And once we slip into, let's say, a hundred yards or less. Maybe 80 yards. 80 yards. Mm -hmm. Do we now, Do we now present use another, a bugle. Bull? another bull? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> only if That's I, what I only say. if I have to. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, those are those are those are questions everybody has, and I do address all these on the app. Everything, so people okay. can know that I, it's all in options. But absolutely, there are times. But my my main thing is the minute I I pose a bull into the equation, I I no longer go at him. I'm done. Yeah. I now I'm bringing him to me and I, I only do that when I have to. So in other words, if I get 80 yards away and there's an opening between me and where he is and I didn't know it until I got there, right. now I'm changing gears and it doesn't mean I'm bringing a bull into the equation yet. It depends on the bull's attitude. Right. So if this bull is really fired up and I mean, he is just talking, I'm, I'm throwing the bull in. I'm going to start raking. What I'm going to do is you when I get to that spot where ball. I, you got to look well, not yet. Okay. Well, I'm the one. I, I, you know, it depends on the bull, but he's cow calling me. Let's just say that it was a, a, a bull up there advertising himself. Okay, I got to that point. Why would I use a lip ball on a bull that's advertising himself and he might possibly have no cows? Yeah. See, I'm okay. telling him I want to steal his cow and he ain't got any. So I'm, you know, I have to think of that. Unless I know he has cows, but right now his interest is me. Right. Right. His interest. And does he have a hot cow? Not by his attitude. He's been no. advertising himself. He's not showing me anything that he was warning, uh, intimidating, challenging. So what do I want to do if I can't get any closer? I want to show him I have a hot cow. I want to okay. show him this cow's hot. Okay. Well, that, that's what, I guess what that's I, where my brain was at. I was thinking if you lip balled, he would think that the cow that was coming in was hot. That's that's where my thinking. Well, was. you know, and, and it's very possible. I guess you got to build. You got to paint the picture a little bit more than. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you got to build up to that point exactly. And so, and I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they automatically jump from one level one and two to ten, and and they'll push a lot of elk that way. If they all came in that way, we would all do it because it works every time, but it doesn't. Right. And so what I've realized over the years is that you have to lead up to what you're trying to represent. So if I got to that point, I may immediately go to a contact buzz, okay? Because a contact buzz used by a cow is asking the elk that are, are in her area or the one she's been talking to to come the rest of the way. She's now telling him to come over here. So see, you can't do that with a regular cow sound. You have to use the sound that an elk would use, and he knows exactly what she's saying. He knows she's saying, you make hey, I want you to come over us? here. Yeah, here's the sound right here. And 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 depending, depending on her excitement, her tone will depict her urgency for it. So when I first start out, I don't get real pumped up about it. I'm just letting her know, like, hey, son, come on over here for a minute. That type of deal if I'm talking to somebody, and if they don't come after three or four times, I'm saying, hey, get over here. You see, I'm still saying the same thing, but I've, I've, I put some emphasis behind right. it. Elk do the same thing. So here's the sound. <laughs> that, 
that's what she'll do. And so, and sometimes there's a few little whines in it, but I usually only do it two or three times, very low key, just so I know he can hear me. And I'm trying to pull him over. Many, many times you'll watch the elk come right over. And the problem with that sound is if he does have other elk around him, he, it can pull them in too. So you just never know, but you're really concentrating on that bull. And I bought, brought in quite a few bulls and cows alike with that sound right there that just start coming right over to you because you're asking an action out of them. The same as if they did that to you and they heard you cow calling, they're asking you to come over there. So see, this is what's important in, in, in the elk world that we understand what's going on when we physically can't see them with our eyes. So we know, uh oh, this is what they want. So now I may have to do something different. Will I now enter a bull into the mix? Oh, it's at times I do, but many times I like to do it more subtly is I'll start raking. Right there is where that cow sound was. I'll just start raking and raking and raking and give a few foot stomps. Immediately, that shows that bull over there that I was talking to originally. And this is all happening pretty fast. This mm -hmm. isn't no 10, 15 minutes. This is all in a very tight, you know, knit time frame. And once I start raking and raking, he knows I'm displaying for this cow that he had coming from 150 to 100. And now she's 80 and I'm displaying for her. And so now all of a sudden, it's got this bull's full attention that, hey, this cow must be coming in or nearing estrus because this is what he would do. He would be doing the same thing as he was displaying or showing off to a cow. So now I'm going to go ahead and do that and maybe throw a few more cow sounds out. If he bugles me at any time during that, I'm cutting him off instantly, instantaneous. I'm cutting him off, being defensive, letting him know to stay back or else. And usually that's all you have to do because you're close enough now. Right. And that's it. It's right. game over. Here he comes. And, and, and that's exactly what we'll do there. If I need to carry it on further, I will do that, you know, see, with, with more sounds. But that's usually when I start getting into the panting, and I'll go ahead and throw that scream out. You see, because it's just selling it. It's things, it sounds that most hunters never use. And why? Because they have no idea what a pant means. But once mm -hmm. you start understanding what it means to the other elk, this can turn the tables right there from eating your tag for that day to having this bull just bull rush right in. And, and, and I'll tell you something. When I use systems like this and I'm calling herd bulls that I know I have cat that have cows, when you're using this type of thing, you're going to notice that 90% of the elk come in on a string. They don't try to go downwind on you. They come right at you. And to me, that is huge because – where I've noticed that bulls or cows try to come in downwind is only when suspicion is raised. When right. there's something not right, the sound you use, or maybe you accidentally got seen by a flash of them and it didn't represent the gender. That's when all of a sudden I notice the red flag raises and here they come around. But, you know, in the 75, 80 herd bulls we've killed, I can tell you 70 or more just beeline right at you, man. They don't mess around. A herd bull comes in to administer some uh real real stuff there he's usually not coming in sneaking on you when you right. when you represent and i've killed quite a few with a longbow where i've cow called my way right to them just like i was explaining to you and what i'll usually do is 150 yards out i'll cow call rapidly with him and he's usually going from bugles to chuckling and he's calling you the rest of the way giving you a direction and i'm popping breaking hitting everything there is in my path i could care less because i'm not sneaking in i'm showing him what a real elk would do there well once i hit 40 yards that's when I knock an arrow and I cut all my calling off. I don't call anymore. Now mm -hmm. I'm pretty much tiptoeing, sneaking the rest of the way. And if I pop, break something, what does he think? It's just a cow. She's right there. Right. See, it's a non-intimidational encounter. He's not defensive. He's not all strung out and, and his muscles ready to blow out of his front legs because he's, he's thinking that something else is coming in that might be a confrontation. It's a cow. And so he's just like his guard is down nine times out of ten, John. That bull's raking as you sneak in that last 40 yards. He's ra He's trying to show off for the cow. He's trying to pull her in. And so it's very important to understand what to look for and listen for and that he may do this. And the reason he's so uh, excited about the cow is because whether he, there's cows around him or not, he doesn't recognize this cow. Because mm -hmm. these elk know each other by sound, sight, or smell. And so when he hears her, he has no idea who she is. So he really wants to scent check this cow. It doesn't make any difference. He wants to smell her. And this is why he allows that cow to go right in there because he knows he doesn't know her. How many times have you been around an elk herd and you can hear the cows just mewing everywhere? I mean, they're just going and the bull's not saying anything. Right. And then all of a sudden you enter into the equation 100 yards away. Meow, 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 and he just lights it right up because he doesn't know you. And he's trying to call you into the group. 
He wants you. He wants this new recruit coming in. Yet he wasn't saying anything to these thirty cow calls you were just hearing going everywhere. And so, you know, this is why. What's going on? So, little things like that. You know, as you start building a, 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 the big picture and putting pieces of the puzzle together, this is a lot of the things that help connect the dots. And I'm telling you, it puts a lot of elk in. You know, at, at, at close bow range. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Every time I hear somebody give you say, a little something. <laughs> every time I hear somebody say 40 yards, I'm like, you know, I'll be sending an arrow already. <laughs> but of course you gotta, you gotta be able to, see, what? you gotta be able to, you said, uh, you know, w- once you get to 40 yards, you knock an arrow and I'm like 40 yards, 40 yards earlier, I would have already sent an arrow. <laughs> no, but you can't see in the timber. We're not hunting sage for I know. That's I know. It. Idaho, Idaho is crazy. I mean, I, I'm well, too, a, a lot I'm of states are. Hunting. I got spoiled yeah. hunting in Arizona where you got a lot of uh, no, yeah. no undergrowth, you know, it's all pretty mm-hmm. open and, and, and easy to see for, you know, distances and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But, in those openings, we call way less and do a lot more glassing. So if we're hunting sagebrush, pinion, juniper, yeah, the calling is, is way down the list. I'm, I'm doing more, unless I can get them into the cover. It's just like the hunt we were in Wyoming. I mean, 90% of it is all sagebrush there. That's, I mean, that's all you see. But once we got them into the timber, and that's where I started working this bull that I called in on Tuesday morning. We got there at daylight and about an hour and a half into it, we had that six point down. And because they fed into the timber, they got into the timber and that is where I started working them and ended up pulling this bull from 350 yards away, which I could not ever see him at mm-hmm. all. I could just hear him. And he was starting to move as I bugled and he moved away and he moved away. After the second setup, I figured out what he was doing and what I needed to change. And I did. And brought him into 20 yards. With I would say it probably took me almost 15 minutes. And I brought him into 20 yards. And oh. one shot, it was a frontal shot. And he cool. only went 100 and something yards and piled up. But the point is, 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 is if I can get him in that cover where they can't see, then the calling is certainly key. Where glassing and ambush, spot and stock would be the key if they're, if they're uh, you know, milling in that more open terrain, for sure. Cool. So I keep getting this question and we actually had a variation of it come across that I, uh, it disappeared already on my Facebook feed, (laughs) but it is when elk aren't talking, they're not bugling, but you know, you're there with an earshot of you. What, what are some of the things you could do to elicit a response? You know, it depends on what a person is looking for. It, it, most people these days, they're they're just looking for you know a legal elk, and and the reason being is, is that uh, you know a lot of hunters are they only have five to seven days to hunt, and if you can hunt the entire season, you're probably going to raise the bar a little bit. But most hunters, when they're hunting that five to seven, and they got two days of travel, and they're you know you got to be able to hunt that whole time, and 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 hopefully your physical conditioning will allow you to do that. But there's, it's not uncommon to come and you're all pumped up and excited. You could not wait for this hunt. And then you come out here and you find out that the first five days, the elk aren't saying anything, nothing. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't even buy a sound. So if you're looking for just about any elk at that time and you want to call, because I've, I've talked to a lot of people now, you know, consider sitting in a wallow, consider finding these wallows, find a, a, a water source, find the trails leading from feeding to bedding, bedding to feeding. They're usually different trails. They're mm-hmm. not the same one. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you want to focus on those things, you're probably going to have a pretty fair shot at, at, at having, uh, you know, an elk to come by, especially when you can see the fresh sign on those on the on the trails and whatnot. And those are always considerations, tree stands, ground blinds, uh, with playing the wind, you know, making sure everything is in your favor if you're going to set these spots. And the hardest spots are benches or flat meadows because the wind is always going to swirl in those areas. And if it gives you away one second, in, in the direction of an elk, you not only blew it for that time frame, but those elk will leave the area and they probably won't be back for weeks. So not mm-hmm. only did you screw it up for then, you screwed it up for a long, probably your entire hunt. So you have to be real careful when you get into these situations where the elk aren't saying anything and you're willing to sit at one of these destination spots. And that's what you're doing when you're trying to kill an elk in quiet country or quiet where quiet elk are. You're usually focusing on destination spots or spots going to their destinations. But so what, if you're looking for, you know, just about any bull, no matter what he is, because, you know, it's over the counter hunts, especially blind cold calling is probably your number one tactic that I use. 
and it is on the app. I actually do a sequence on there for five full minutes of showing people how to set up and, and the calling sequence itself. But by doing that and trolling with it, if you can do three or four of those in a morning, mm -hmm. your odds of pulling elk in are incredible. And why? Because elk are herd animals. And anytime a new group or new elk, a small amount of them move into an area where there's resident elk in that area, it drives them nuts not to know who they are. And so they come slipping in. Hardly ever do they call their way in. And they'll come slipping in to come and check out who are these elk that they're unfamiliar with. And that's why it works so good. But you have to have a good setup, do a good calling routine, because now you're bringing elk where they have no intention of going. Right. That's not a destination spot. You're just trying to say, I want you. I see fresh sign or I know you're over there. I want you coming over here. And so your calling has to promote that curiosity. And it works. Let me tell you, you can call a lot of elk this way. It may not be the big branch antler bulls you're looking for. But again, if you're just looking for raghorns, spikes, cows, this is so deadly. And, and, and it will pull those in. Out of all the elk, and I, I mean, I have pulled in hundreds and hundreds of elk. I think only one was a six point. That's it. They're just rarely a six point comes in. And it's mm -hmm. most likely it's because there's so many of the other elk out there. Way right. more cows and spikes than there are six point bulls. And so the odds are you're going to pull those your way. But that is one of the biggest things you can do is, is uh, you know, hunt the water sources, hunt the trails because the elk are still going to be moving. And I, I, I still bugle a lot. I mean, I'm just covering more ground, even September 1st. I'm calling bugling because I'm looking for the one that wants to play because I'm not really looking for the smaller raghorns. I'm usually five or six points is what we're looking for usually these days in our over-the-counter hunts. If it's a draw tag, obviously we raise the bar. But you right. know what I mean, over-the-counter, you kill a five and six every year and you're doing really, really well Absolutely. You know, for most people. But there's other techniques. I mean, there's so many things you can do for quiet elk, but sitting is probably one of the largest, but one of the hardest to do. It really is difficult to sit, you know, hours and hours on end when blind cold calling can actually pull animals in. And it's just more exciting for us, you know, so whatever uh, trips a guy's trigger and, 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 and if he wants to be versatile and try both and still ensue calling, look, we, we've been calling since September 1st here and we've got elk to bugle every single day. Nothing like it's going to be for peak rut, but we've still got elk to respond. Sometimes only once or twice. That's all they'll say. Nothing else. But those are still killable elk. Right. See, there, there's a way to get that elk. But anyway, so for quiet ones, I, I, usually that's something. I just got another question came across uh, from Tanner Kemp that says, my wife has a 39 tag here in Idaho. And we just got an extra 500s in this unit this weekend. This weekend. Uh, but we have a few bulls located. Should we still bugle or find the one that wants the, and f let's hold on a second. Still bugle a lot, finding the one that wants to play. hundred percent. I've hunted unit 39 many times. I know that unit. <laughs> so I know I'm familiar with it. Um, absolutely, man. And there's no question. You just have to be strategic in your calling. You know, you don't want to stand right out in the open or skyline yourself because it's easy for elk to look up in the direction where they're hearing a sound, you know, and, uh, and, and see where it's coming from and, 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 and spot you. So just be smart. But what I bugle, are you kidding me? Number one way to kill elk right there. Number one way you could cow call all you want. They, and they're just not far reaching, but there's, there's a time for a cow call, but what I bugle for location purposes and trying to find them 100%. And that's how I would end up killing them. That's how I'm going to find them in real open country, glassing, and calling can both work. What are you doing with your glass once you find them? You go over there. You're not right. using your glass for anything else. When you're using a location bugle and you get a bull to respond, you are not calling your way to the bull. You shut down. You're done. You already found him now. The same mm -hmm. as glassing. So now you go over to his area. If he's still in the open when you get over there, you don't call at all. Don't stand at the edge of the timber thinking, I'm hidden here and I can call to elk out in the open. The reason I mentioned that 39 has a lot of open country, a ton of it. It also has a lot of timber, so I don't know where he's hunting. But regardless, make sure the elk get in the cover before you start trying to work that bull. Now, mm -hmm. when you gave, if he's bugling and he receives a challenging response, you can bet your rear there is a hot cow in there. And that is a dead bull. All you have to do is try to get in that 80-yard range. That is where you want to lip ball him 
right there. And once you do, it's a game changer. And once you're going to lip ball, there's, there's another thing that you can do. Once you lip ball a bull and you get his full attention, a lot of times he doesn't come running in. So what you're trying to do is tell him to come in the rest of the way. And one of the number one ways to do that is you give – once he's in that 70, 80-yard range and he doesn't want to break, hit mm -hmm. him with a nervous grunt and a roundup bugle. That will bring him in so fast. As a matter of fact, the two bulls that I called in and we killed this year, that is how I finished them off. And one had cows, so I, I lip balled him, and I brought him from about 150 all the way to that 75, uh, 80 yard range. But I needed him closer. But he got to a little bit of an opening, and so what I did was I asked him to come the rest of the way. And my son was the shooter, and I was hitting a little bit. And as soon as I hit him with that sound, my son says, "You should have seen him, Dad. He picked his head up and he just ran at me. And that's and he shot him with a longbow. And so that's awesome. how we killed that herd bull right there. And so and that sound. Let me show you what it sounds like when you put it together. This okay. is it right here. We know what the lip ball was. Now here's the one where you're asking him to come the rest of the way. And you got to watch it because he'll do the same thing to you. I like beating him to it because he'll give you this sound right here when he's telling you he's, wants, he's where he wants to be and he wants you to come the rest of the way. So this is what's so important. And it's a, this works on any elk. I don't care what state you're hunting. These sounds are the same language. So you're going to hear a sound like this from me if I can get that bull in that 75-yard range. And most of the time, I'm listening. I'm hearing his bugle saying, he's just right there. I know right exactly where he is. I need to bring him closer for the shot. And here it is. That is a roundup bugle. Now, you notice how I wasn't, I want, I wasn't real intense with it. Okay. When a, when a bull spots you and he's got cows, I want to make a clear differential right here. When a bull spots a hunter or, or something went wrong and he got a little whiff of scent and he's still 80 yards, 90 or whatever, and they just wind you or see something he doesn't like and he's got his cow sitting there in the sagebrush or right on the edge of the timber and you're working this bull and he comes in, all of a sudden you got caught. You're going to hear a roundup bugle. You're not going to hear a lip ball. A lip ball is not as nearly as urgent as a roundup. When you hear this sound and you think you're sneaking in and it sounds like this, you're done. He got you. And how many hunters out there, and I can tell you right now from the listeners, when they hear that sound, it's like we never had a chance again. All the elk moved off, the bugles. I bugled the bull, and he kept going further, 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 further because you got found out you were there. So – well, I'm not doing that with that bull. I'm lengthening that tone out. That right there is not an alarm type of a bugle. That is more of come on over this way. You're going to find out a bull will do that to you, especially if you're cow calling. Many times he'll chuckle you, but sometimes he'll hit you with that sound right there. And if anybody wants to see it, go to YouTube. They're everywhere. You'll see these bulls as these guys are cow calling and they're giving him that long little note and then right at the end. And that's what he's doing. He's not challenging the cow or trying mm -hmm. to run it off. You see, that's not what he's doing. He's, he's using what's called a roundup or come on over here, bugle. And this is one of the sounds I use on a bull, even a herd bull, right when he's cutting to a certain distance, but he's not quite committing, hit him with that sound. And you guys are going to laugh because here he comes. And he doesn't mess around because this is exactly what he would do. He would make the same sound. So once you start understanding what, when to use each one of these, for, for herd bulls, I like really relying on the lip ball and this only if I need it. Most cases, the lip ball gets it done. If I get on a bull that has cows and he has no hot cow in there, you see, now I'm no longer using the lip ball because it's ne not nearly as effective. It doesn't mean right. it would never work. But it's not nearly as effective as, as, as getting in there close and, and, and just trying to call his cow away from the roundup bugle. And that's all you're doing. You're just trying to call the other cows this way. He doesn't like it. See, you mm -hmm. can now easily raise the bar and get this guy just screaming mad. And it's just like the bull we, we took in Wyoming. He had no cows. And that bull only bugled every two, three, four minutes. He wouldn't answer anything. But once I cut him off, after three or four bugles, I cut him off. He was now answering within 15, 20 seconds. And then I cut him off again, and the next thing you know, he's hitting me bugle for bugle. Bugle for bugle, just hitting me. This is on the second bull. And this bull is now 300 probably plus yards away. He went through a small opening, 
we didn't see him, but we could hear him as he bugled and, and left us. And as soon as I started cutting him off and got in the timber, he started closing the distance and he bugled again. I cut him off and he started getting more outraged. You could see the intensity of his bugle. <laughs> he didn't like the idea of this other bull pushing him out of his area at all, not at all. And so as I built up the intensity, I could hear the bull bugle. I now know he's in the opening and I'm only maybe 30, 40 yards from my son. And I slowly backed up about five, six, seven yards at a time, raking, thrashing, raking. And then I started to call him. And the last sound I made was that nervous grunt and the roundup bugle. And he ran right to 20 yards. My son, even he was telling me, he said, Dad, that bull was like 70, 75. And when you hit him with that sound again, he just ran right there to 20 and stopped. He went to bugle. And that's when Paul shot him. And he stuck him. Awesome. You know, he hit him with a frontal shot. But I'm just showing you these little things. You just don't run around there bugling. So when this guy's asking about bugling in 39, yeah, but don't expect to get a response and have the bull just come running over you like a kamikaze bull. You are, you may have to work those bulls unless they're starting to get heated up and they're around the hot cows. You'll right. know because when you're around hot cows, there'll be multiple bulls bugling because they're bugling for her attention. You see, and that's another key thing. I mean, there's so many key things that we look for. <laughs> But but we when can, you we have multiple, probably sit here for ten hours. <laughs> but this is important right here. You, we we, we want to cover this piece. When you have multiple bulls bugling in an area, you have a herd bull, and let's say you have two, three, four satellites. See, most people are are are, are thinking that these satellites are trying to challenge or fight the herd bull. That is not what they're doing. No. They could care less about that. If they wanted to challenge or fight the herd bull, they would walk right up to him. What they're doing is they're trying to call the hot cow away. And so when these multiple bulls are sitting around the herd bull, the herd bull is warning them through challenges and screams to stay back or else. Well, these guys keep representing or advertising themselves. And the reason they're doing that is that one cow will be bred by three or four bulls in that 12 to 15 hour span. Almost every single cow is. So see, a lot of guys think, oh, it's the herd bull. He breeds her and he's done. And that's it. No, he's good for five or six shots. That's it. He's done. He's toast. She wants to make sure she conceives. She now will seek out the other dominant structured bulls that she can hear in this area to also breed her, to ensure her that she does conceive. So these guys know they got a chance. They know it. They don't know which one she's going to pick, but she's going to pick the more dominant structured bull. And that's why when I'm working a good bull or herd bull and I have to go lip ball, I am not trying to be a wimp. I go down and I put the pedal to the metal. I do everything I can, you see, to, mm -hmm. in order to do that. So it's very, very important for me to be able to, uh, to administer a good deep sound because how many times do you see satellites say, well, you know, I think we better go up there and be kind of wimpy today. We don't want to chase the herd bull off. You know, they don't think like that, right. but humans do. They think they may bugle too big, but not for a good bull. Now, if I'm working a smaller bull and I want to see what he has and get eyes on him, yeah, I might tailor the calling down a little bit, not to get too crazy, but most good bulls, if you think you're going to out bugle them, think again, because when right. they want to get co coarse and nasty, no man can match a man, let me tell you. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to cover that so people understood what's going on in that little framework there. And that's why if you want to kill just a five or six or anything like that, you get in that kind of an environment where they're breeding. It's called a breeding sequence. Go to your own breeding sequence about 150 yards away. You will pull those satellites over to you so fast. That's probably our number one tactic for killing bulls. Number one, go to the breeding sequence when there's actually one happening. It, that's right. why they got there. That's why the satellite showed up in the first place because of the bull's bugling. You see, he's, he's given a lot of lip balls, groans, moans, glunks, and he's demonstrating right there, defensive action. And there's a hot cow there. So when you get close to that, this now will pull those satellites and come right over to you. Cause they also want to scent check your area. And where's that hot cow in there, which again, that's what brought them over there. So I'm telling you, all these little things in, in, in over-the-counter units, you start doing these little things at the right time, right place, and you will draw a lot of elk in. Awesome. There's a lot of good info. I, I actually want to have you back on because we're just about out of time. <laughs> okay. I definitely want to have you on no for problem. a campfire section and uh, have you share some stories with us because even your stories have a bunch of teaching points in them, and that's awesome. Um, hey, no problem at all. I'd be, I'd be happy to do that.
Yeah, definitely like to have you on a couple more times if it, if at all possible. Um, but before we jump off here, why don't you uh, tell the listeners where they can find your app and um, oh okay, uh, sure yeah no I'll give do us a little that. bit of information about you where you can find you out about you. Yeah, um, being the owner of Elknet Outdoors, that is the name of the of the company, and the website is elknet.com. And even right there at elknet.com, you'll see there will be a link there that would actually take you to the Elknut app. And it will show you once you're there, uh, you can either, if you have an Android phone or an Apple device, you would click on that and it takes you right to the app store in order to pick that up. And all these sounds we're talking about and many, many more are on that app with full detailed content, written explanation, what the elk are saying, what to do next, all in options. And, and so you can hear that very sound you know, if you have the app there, you're going to hear me make it and you're going to hear a real elk make the specific sound that you are, that you're listening to or interested in cow sounds mm -hmm. and bull sounds alike. So if you're in the field and you hear a cow or bull sound and you're not sure what it is, you can open that app up and go through the sounds and go, not that one, not that. Oh, it's that one right there. That's the one I'm hearing. And you get the exact message, what they're saying, what they're looking for or wanting, and then proceed on reading and tells you what to do next. It will help you to at least start to build a, a, a knowledge base uh, until you actually, actually in time, you won't need the app. But right. right now, it will help cut that learning curve way down. And there's video on every one of those sounds on how to make that sound with the mouth read. So there's just so much on it. There, all the different bull sounds, cow sounds, explanation, a video clip on every single one of them on how to produce the sound and whatnot. And, and the breeding sequence, the advertising sequence, blank cold calling, there's a video clip on every one of those on a setup on how to produce those sounds, when to use them, when not to use them. Them. So that's so what the, the app, app is all about, and where you can get it is basically at the app store. If you go to the search function there, you can just put in Elknet, and you'll see it there. And we're throwing a lot of updates on it, and most of them are free. So everything on it's free right now. You just pay the initial four ninety nine, and you don't you don't need phone service once you have it. Once it's downloaded, all you need is battery power on your phone, and you can watch that app or listen to the sound at any given time, within phone service or not. Sweet. Well, thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. I wish I had you coming with me on my elk hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you'd be, you'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heck, oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. Well, you, good, you don't uh, have any time to hear that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. We hear that a lot. <laughs> but no, it's, but a, no, lot it's a lot of fun. Yeah, but yeah I'd be happy to come back, John, any time. Anytime. I'd, love to, I'd love to hear how, how you're happy to out, too. Very cool. All right, man. Well, thanks for coming on. Enjoy the rest of your season and good luck out there. Uh, hope you knock down a good one in Idaho because I know you still got to fill your tag there. Um, yes, yes, so I'll let you know how it goes over here in Utah. Sounds good. Sounds good. That's what I'm in Utah. All right. All right. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for having me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Right, bye, bye now.